All right, good evening. Masal khair. Okay, I'm going to speak in English. Okay. Um, everybody understands English? Nobody does not? All you, all you Arabs? No, I'll be speaking English. No, this is Dearborn. We speak English and Arabic, so I will be speaking in English. Um, so I believe, are there any other Palestinians here? I might be the only Palestinian here. Yes, hello, hello, hello. oh, we Sam, for real? Oh, well, no, I don't mean like, I don't mean in spirit. I understand, I understand. Look, I've always said that, you know, we are all Palestinian, and today especially. Um, let me say quickly about today, <clears throat> well, what I'll read will have something to do with, with today, but I'm not, I'm not sad about today. Um, I've been to Jerusalem, I've, I've stayed in Jerusalem for many long periods of time, and Jerusalem is, uh, Jerusalem doesn't have a religion, but Jerusalem is an Arab city. She's been Arab for 1400 years, and 50 years of the Israelis have not been able to change that, and definitely building some building there won't change that either. So be very optimistic, I beg everybody to be very optimistic about Palestine and Palestinians and everything that we are been doing. Palestinians have the highest birth rate in the world. I don't know if you know that. We have the highest birth rate in the world. In 1948, when, when Israel kicked out 750,000 Palestinians, 150,000 remained in what is today um, the borders of Israel, or what we might call Aradat um, Manu Arbaina with Dakhil, or something like that. 150,000. If those 150,000 grew at the normal average global birth rate of the world, after 70 years they should be about 450,000 people. Does anybody know how many they are? 1.7 million people. So we're not going anywhere anytime soon. The Israelis drop bombs and we drop babies and uh, we are staying around for a very long time. <clears throat> I'd like to tell a story <coughs> about a man named Shafiq. Shafiq Zahir was born in Nazareth around 1912. He was smart, funny, and good-looking. He was a Palestinian, and he loved hummus. His mother died of complications during his birth, and his father quickly remarried. After his teenage years, Shafiq left Nazareth and eventually settled in the beautiful Palestinian city of Yaffa. At that time, Yaffa was the economic, political, and cultural center of Palestine. He became a Christian missionary, worked as a construction worker, and was from then on known by his baptismal name of Ilyas. In the early 1940s, after performing work on her family's house, Ilyas met Selma Manoli. Selma was a teacher in Yaffa, and they soon decided to be married. Before they were married, however, Shafiq, in hopes of bettering his life and perhaps to fall into good graces, volunteered to fight for the colonial British in World War II. Of course, the British at that time controlled Palestine, and Elias Shafiq performed his duties for the British during the war, where he was captured and eventually escaped from German forces. He was wounded, and he returned from the war and returned to Yaffa, where he finally married Selma. In March of 1948, George, their first child, was born. George, or in Arabic, George, a Palestinian, loves hummus too, with lots of olive oil. <clears throat> One month later, in 1948, Zionist forces, with the support of the British government, took Yaffa by military force, forcing tens of thousands of Arabs from the city, including Elias, Shafiq, Salma, and their infant child, George. After fighting and risking his life for the British government, he returned to his homeland only to find that the same government that he had fought for had given it to a foreign people. I think I know how Elias must have felt. One time I took a girl out, bought her an expensive dinner, 
and I even got a flat tire on the way home. I didn't care though because we had a great time and we even planned to see each other again. We had a real connection. The next night though I saw her out with another guy. Not nearly as smart or handsome as me. When I went over to say hello she looked me up and down and said, who are you again? I was so depressed. I drove on that flat tire for a month. Elias became a refugee in Amman, continued to feast on hummus, and eventually put down roots in a poor neighborhood named Jabal al Hashmi Shemali. Using his skills in construction, he bought some used crates and built a small wooden structure for his young family. He worked mainly as a carpenter in Amman, he was a teacher in Yaffa. And Elias and Salma lived the life of refugees, earning low wages and surviving on monthly UN rations of flour, sugar, milk, and beans. Back in Nazareth, Musa, Elias's father, knew nothing of his son. In fact, everyone in Nazareth had assumed that Elias had died in World War II. By 1960, Elias's neighborhood in Amman had grown, and a small church had been built. The priest, a native of Nazareth, knew Elias and Selma well in Amman. And as a religious official, that priest traveled freely. He could go between Nazareth and Amman, unlike Arabs who could not. During a trip in 1960, he noticed something very strange in a Nazareth church. A memorial dedicated in the name of a lost loved one, Il al Marhum Ilyas Zahir. The priest quickly found Musa, the father of this man, telling him something unbelievable. I think I know your son, and he is an Amman. In order to prove that Ilyas was who they thought he might be, the church asked Musa to formulate a set of questions to be sent to Amman. Ilyas passed the test with flying colors. As a Palestinian with Israeli citizenship, Musa was permitted to enter the old city of Jerusalem, which was at that time part of Jordan, once a year for religious purposes. Elias lived in Jordan and they arranged to meet there. Elias, Selma, and George traveled from Amman to Jerusalem. Father and son were briefly reunited, but 24 hours later Musa had to return to Israel, to Nazareth. Similar visits occurred over the next few years. The family had been reunited. In early 1967, after a dispute with his own family, Musa angrily left Nazareth. He said, I'm going to live with my son, Elias, and I'm man. He illegally crossed into the northern west bank and was walking in the hills of Jenin. He was an old man. He didn't make it far before he was captured by the Jordanian Mukhabarat. They thought he was a spy. They came to Elias's house in Jordan. They said, we caught this old man in the hills of Jenin. He says, he's your father. Elias said he is. But Musa was not allowed to come to Amman. He was sent back. In fact, Musa might be the only Palestinian in history ever actually deported to Israel. Elias and Musa never met again. In 1970, Elias, Musa passed away in Nazareth. Elias continued his hard life in Amman. Although Palestinians are granted citizenship in Jordan, they remain second-class citizens like in every Arab country. King Hussein constantly cracked down on them during 1970, Black September. During that time, the Jordanian army killed at least 10,000 Palestinians. Elias and his family sought shelter under their one-room house. George graduated from college in Jordan, went to study in Beirut, and eventually earned a PhD from the University of California in Berkeley, where he married another Palestinian refugee. In 1977, he returned to Amman, became a professor at the University of Jordan. In 1979, as a result of a little political episode, George, who was wildly popular with his students, was fired from his post by the King of Jordan, and he was exiled and found a new life in America. Elias, like Musa, had lost his son. Later in 1979, after George had left for America, Elias died in his sleep in Amman. They say he died from a heart attack, but it could have been that he had simply had enough. 
George could not return to Jordan for his father's funeral, knowing he would face certain arrest. Elias was my grandfather. His legacy lives through George, my father, and me and my brother and sisters. Of course, we both share his intelligence, humor, and handsome looks. We also carry on his Palestinian story. Yes, we enjoy life and we laugh like everyone else, but we always have that little hole in our hearts. As human beings, we are thankful for what we have, but as Palestinians, we are always aware of what we don't. Things, however, are changing. The world can try to reject our past, but it cannot deny our future. I happen to think my future is very bright, and it's full of Palestinian hummus. That's a true story, by the way. 